Hello, my name is Dieter Lusmore, and you join me for a design discussion where I take an aspect within board game design and creation and just try and unpack it a little bit. And today I wanted to talk about uh, IP, the use of intellectual property, it's what IP stands for uh, in board gaming, and kind of the shift that's taken place over time, uh, also my experience with it, all these kinds of things. Um, the concept of intellectual property is a very simple one. It's just the, 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 the idea that uh, an idea can legally belong to somebody and therefore to use their intellectual property, typically you'll need to, to pay license, um, pay a fee to use somebody else's idea. Um, but practically then within, within various forms of medium, in this case board gaming, um, that usually means using a theme, uh, a world, a setting for your game that, that somebody else came up with, that, has, that was a creation of somebody else's brain. For instance, there are a good number of Lord of the Rings games, there's a good number of Star Wars games, I've got a Thunderbirds game behind me. Um, there's all these things that were pre-existing worlds, pre-existing ideas, they were the property of somebody else and the game designers were allowed permission to create games in that world. Now, historically, if you like, and I don't know how far back we're talking here, but IP games were a bit naff. One of the main uses that's still, that's still happening uh, for IP in a game is, is to widen your potential audience. It's to get people into buying your game that might not have bought it otherwise. A modern example of that, let's say, is Codenames. Good game, solid game, lots of people like it. And in the last few years, they've brought out The Simpsons, Marvel, Disney, um, Harry Potter, all these different versions of this game. Similarly, Love Letter, there's, there's, there's tons of different versions set in different worlds. The Hobbit has a version, Batman has a version, all these things. And they go for people that you know, might not have known what this game was, they're not in the hobby as such, but they walk past and go, oh, I like Batman. Well, it's, it's a Batman game. Oh, okay, fine, let's get that. Um, some of the other uses, though, uh, are more integral. So the games that I mentioned before, um, Thunderbirds just behind me there, and let's say some of the more recent Star Wars Lord of the Rings games, let's say Journeys in Middle-Earth, um, and let's say Star Wars Outer Rim, let's just pick some examples come out in the last two, three, four years um, have very much been games that started with the theme um, and started with that world and built the game around it. Journeys in Middle Earth yes, is sort of a re-implementation of, of a previous IP game set in the, the um, HP Lovecraft uh, Cthulhu kind of world um, but it's this app integrated discovery adventure game persistent campaign carries on from one to the next but it's in the world of lord of the rings it's not set in lord of the rings it's in that world it's in middle earth it's these, it's some other characters there's some familiar characters from those books um but some of the, the wider characters from other books like the silmarillion and such things and so they've taken that theme much, broad, much more broadly not just stuck it onto a game that already exists just to make people buy it but suddenly Actually, it's for fans of that, that game, not, not casual people necessarily, but actually I want to explore further into that Lord of the Rings living card game. Similarly, the system uh, they, they've used in multiple ways, again, for Arkham, uh, Arkham Horror, the card game, uh, Game of Thrones, and a few other things. They've used a similar format, Marvel Champions now even. Um, but... That it was just an opportunity for, for fans to, to delve into that and for people who just like good solid gameplay to, to try out this, this new world. And so it kind of can cross both. Yes, it can just be the purely commercial, um, we're trying to get non-gamery or even collectory people um, to get different versions of it or to, to find a theme that suits them. That was one of the keys that we talked about very early on. Um, in Winsome Lucemore is talking about knowing your audience, who, do you, who, who are you trying to aim at? And so that it's a way of doing that. Um, but typically, as I say, his, historically rather, um, they weren't very good games. They were just excuses to make people buy stuff and that didn't feel so good for, 
for hobby gamers, it's just like, it's a bit, bit crass. Um, whereas now, putting it on things like code names or creating games to purely be in that world is, is great because it does expand the hobby. It does get more people to buy the games, but they're now better games. Things like Battlestar Galactica is so, um, I want to say seminal. I'm not sure if I'm using that correctly, but for a lot of people's experience within gaming, it's this huge sprawling thing based on the more recent TV series, not, not the old uh, original. Um, I say more recent, it's still probably 10 years old by now. Uh, and you're you're trying to work out who's a Cylon. You're, it's this long deduction game. You're trying to do the game as well, but at the same time, figure out who's a bad guy. Do they know they're a bad guy? Yeah, all this stuff, it's hidden roles. And it's this huge experience for people and they loved it and it's drawn them in and they use screen captures, same as Thunderbirds, pictures from the TV show to, to connect people to it. And yet people that don't know the theme, don't know the show, can feel connected to it too. So I suppose any questions coming out of this are, what IPs would you like to see turned into games? Um, recently, uh, in fact, I've got it here. Um, the Red Rising set of books is being turned into a board game by Stonemaier Games, and it's doing kind of the reverse service as a hobby gamer. I now am interested, somebody very kindly sent me this, uh, very generously. Um, I now am interested in the books and the source material because I'm a fan of Stone My Games and I want to see what that game's about and so I want to go back and find out so it can work both ways. So what IPs are you interested in seeing? This could be books, as I say. It could be movies, TV shows that we've already spoken about. It could be video games. There's, there are fall, there's Fallout game. There's, there's a Horizon Zero Dawn. There's, there's all these things. Monster Hunter is, is being released as a game at some point. Uh, as a board game, sorry. Um, so what are some IPs that you would love to see Equally, what are some IPs, Marvel maybe, Star Wars maybe, Lord of the Rings maybe, that you're just sick of, that they just seem to be everywhere. I'm not talking about themes in general because pirates don't really belong to anyone. Um, but what, what are some IPs that you see a lot of, you know, oh, do something else, do something different with it. Um, hopefully that's been semi-informative. I'd love to hear your comments down below. Uh, do subscribe to the channel if you don't already and hit the bell icon so you stay updated when I put out new stuff in between. Uh, do find me on social media, just search Win Some Loose More. You'll find me on there. It'll be great to see you and get, get in contact. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again. I've been Dieter for Win Some Loose More. Bye.